I'm going to show you how to build this really cool tower and this is actually the same design we used for our world record tower which was built in the National Building Museum in Washington DC and it was built over 10 hours of construction time with 5,123 planks which ended up being 51 feet 8 inches tall. So I'm going to show you the basic structural design of that tower and if you have a tall ceiling in your house somewhere that's where i would recommend starting to build this tower is really fun because you can build as tall as you want and as you can with it be, being very stable and um, you're using upright planks so you're going to be building taller faster um, if you want to use a template for the base, I have that in the description below. Otherwise, you can just build freely like I'm doing. You will need your planks and an open space. So go ahead and grab those and let's get started. I am starting out by making the base and I'm taking two planks and then two other planks and I'm using those as a uh, to help move the blocks around as one unit. So I want to line up those planks and then do the same thing um, and you'll see eventually how this is going to work out um, by placing a plank diagonally to connect those and you want to make sure um, the plank is covering the end of the planks that you would put down. So once again, I'm using those planks as a tool to help me move the two planks that I'm going to end up keeping. So these are the base of the interconnecting towers that um, will connect the octagon shape. So you'll see once I add the rest of the planks what the base should look like. All right, now I'm going to remove the planks that I used as the tool, but I'm going to put it right on top of um, those two planks there. And then I'm going to place another plank right on top of those, so it'll be two stacked. And then to finish off the interior, I'm going to place four planks for top, and that's our first base layer. Now I'm going to place upright planks on each of the columns, and to secure those upright planks as I go, I'm going to set a plank on top of those. And I like to kind of drop it on top, it might wobble a little bit, but if they just fall over that's okay you can try again and then I like to drop those planks and into place and connect them that way then I'm going to not do that I'm going to start the next column and as you can see I'm angling the planks that makes the uh, the upright planks more stable now adding that extra diagonal plank will connect those two towers and again make them more stable so the more planks you connect with um, each plank the stronger it is. I'm just going to keep going around. Alright now I'm going to place uh, planks on the outside of the, each of those columns and that way the height of the planks for the next layer are all the same. So that's the first layer. Now I'm going to do the same thing over again for the second layer and this just repeats over and over again um, until you get it as tall as you want. I like to start with the column that's furthest away from me so I don't have to lean over something that I've already built. And that's the pattern of this tower that you just keep repeating until you get it to the height that you want. 
Thanks again for joining me. Stick around after this uh, closure for a really cool video on actually knocking out some of these planks because the structure is so weighted on the inside that you can actually knock planks out. So um, thanks again for joining me. We hope you come again next time. And for more ideas, you can subscribe to our channel or check out our website, kivaplanks.com. We can't wait to see what you create. So the question would be, what do you think would happen if I pulled this block out very quickly? Raise your hand if you think that would be no problem. Uh, raise your hand if you think that would be a bad idea. Okay, I will do a little experiment. <laughs> so uh, when I pulled that out, kind of carefully, there was some pressure on that. Uh, because this is a load-bearing column. Each one of these is a load-bearing column. They're supporting it. But as soon as I pulled that out, whatever was pushing on there shifted elsewhere. And so now, these two blocks here are pinching me to hold that up. So once this is here, we know this is no longer a load-bearing wall. So all of these can come out. And, and that, doesn't, that doesn't matter. So, uh, but the load has just gone in. And this is part of redundant architecture. They do this in skyscrapers so that if one corner happens to that, it's not going to fall. If something devastating happens, as we'll see, devastation will happen here. There's a number of uh, things you could do with keep a blanks, even with smaller structures, where, uh, where unless you really studied it, you would think you can't do that. It doesn't, doesn't make sense, but it really does if you kind of work backwards. So um, it gets dicier when we go to the internal ones. You're going to do this one. But you did an internal one already. Yeah. So I think, yeah. Yes, okay, we're getting ready. So, and I can feel these are fairly loose. And I can go all the way up, up here. Uh, what about this one? I'm starting to get to a point where I don't know what's going to happen. And I know which way the floor is sloping. Yeah. Nice. And so, let's see if I can do those. Get it down, maybe uh, to that point, and we can do these. Okay. And so this is something you, by building this tower. Dorothy did this in like an hour all by herself. You can have students, four students, building this, and uh, so it would take them uh, 20 four to minutes. twenty minutes. They could get this this high. 